Today, we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and I'm sure yours, worship. We all love to worship the Lord with music and song and give Him praise. As we're looking at the ministry of angels, we learned that angels are worshipers. And so let's talk about the worship of angels and how they worship God and how they inspire us to worship. The one feature of both mankind and the angels of God is the fact that God created us for worship. That's one thing we share in common with the angels. We are made to worship. John the Revelator was in awe at an angel who appeared to him in a vision. He writes, I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19, verse 10. John was awed by this mighty angel. He fell down before him to honor him, but the angel said, no, don't worship me, don't honor me. I'm a companion with you, with all those who confess Jesus as Lord. He said, worship God. You see, angels inspire us to worship God. Some people worship angels, but we're not to stand in awe of angels, only in awe of God. Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, stand in awe of God, Ecclesiastes 5 and 7 says. And that's the message of the angel to John. Don't worship me. Don't honor me. Worship God. The first thing we learn about the worship of angels from the Bible is that angels worship God for his glory. The glory of God means the essence of who he is, his holiness, his love, his eternality, his omniscience, his omnipotence. Isaiah saw the throne of God and the angels in worship saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Isaiah 6 verses 1 through 3. The trilogy, holy, 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 is a superlative. It means of the highest honor to God. It may also refer to the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's the perfection of three in the numerology of the Bible. Perfect worship, holy, 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 sacred worship, pure worship. Second of all, the Bible tells us that angels praise God as our creator. And we need to remember that at the core of why we worship God is because God is our creator. God made us. We live in a world where people have forgotten God as their creator. We act as though we've made ourselves, but we haven't. We didn't appear on this earth automatically. We are made in the image of God. Into the core of our worship is the praising of God as our creator. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The opening statement of the Bible becomes the core of why we worship. The Bible tells us day after day, they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who is, who was, and who is to come. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory, honor, and power. Why? For you created all things. That's why we worship God. He created all things, and by you, Lord, they were created and have their being, Revelation 4, verse 8 through 11. Think about that. God not only is our creator, made everything, but he sustains everything. The balance of the gases and the oxygen and the weather, just think of the balance of nature that enables us to continue to live on the planet. The alignment of the planets and the stars, everything in the universe is held together. It's kept in its organized place by the power of God. God not only is the creator of the world, he is the sustainer. He holds everything together. In fact, Hebrews 1 and 3 says that he holds everything together by his powerful word. Think about that. God created the world by his command, by the word of God where the heavens made, and he holds everything together by his powerful word. So they worship God for his creatorship. The third truth we learn about angels in worship that inspires us is that they are awed by our worship. This is amazing that when angels view us singing and praising God and honoring God, they're awed by the worship of humanity and by the redeemed of the Lord. Now, angels sing the song of creation while we sing a greater song the song of redemption. We also sing the song of creation, but we don't stop there. We also praise God as our redeemer. We praise Jesus as our redeemer and savior who saved us from the law of sin and death. Angels stand in awe of God's plan of salvation. The plan of salvation that God ordained through the coming of his son into the world, through his death on the cross for the sins of the world, for his glorious resurrection, angels are in awe of that whole plan of God. 
Many people look at the plan of God and the cross and the resurrection with skepticism. And Well, why did Jesus have to die? But the angels of God look at God's plan of salvation in awe and wonder. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 through 12, that angels long to look into these things. Think about that. You and I are studying the Word of God today. Every time we open the Bible, we look into these things. We look deeper into the mysteries of Christ's coming of the cross, of His redemption, of the blessings of God. That's why we study the Word, isn't it? We're, we're looking deeper into the things of God. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7 through 10, that the Spirit of God reveals the deep things of God. We look into them. We learn from the Word of God. Angels wish they could look deeper. They long to look into these things and understand them. But they can only understand them from an observation, not from experience. They're not redeemed like we are. The world thinks the cross is foolishness, but it is the wisdom and power of God. Paul reminds us of this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness for those who are perishing, but to us who are saved, it is the power of God. Christ, the wisdom and power of God, he says in 1 Corinthians 1 and 23. Angels long to look into salvation, to understand it. And they are an inspiration for all of us to look deeper into our faith, to never be skeptical and cynical and say, well, we don't understand the cross because the cross is beyond our understanding. But the more we look into it, the more God will reveal his truth to us in the cross. The more we look into the scripture, the more God will reveal. May we be like the angels and long to look deeper into the things of God and not be like the world that sometimes just thinks it's foolishness or makes no sense. Fourth of all, angels rejoice over our salvation. This is amazing. When people accept Jesus as their savior, the angels of heaven rejoice. Jesus said, Jesus said this. I tell you, there's more rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents, Luke 15 and 10. That's amazing. I think of the moment I accepted Christ. I was a young boy of eight. What a moving experience that was. When the minister read John 3, 16, God so loved the world and put my name in there. God so loved David and I prayed and asked Christ to come into my heart. My life has been focused on Jesus ever since. There was a moment, there was rejoicing in heaven, that moment. I look at that now, I didn't think about it then. I didn't even know that then. When you accept the Christ, there was rejoicing. If you haven't accepted him, I pray you will. There'll be great rejoicing in heaven and in your heart, but in heaven over one sinner who comes to repentance, a change of heart, a change of mind, stepping out of doubt into faith and believing in Christ. Think back to the moment you were saved, that you received Jesus as your Savior. And think about the fact that when you were confessing your faith in Jesus, in that moment, wherever you were, you remember that moment you gave your heart to Christ. In that moment, the angels of God erupted in great rejoicing over your salvation. If they rejoice over our salvation, how much more should we rejoice over our salvation and get up every day and say, Lord, above all things, I thank you that I'm saved by the grace of the living God. Well, the Bible tells us, fifth of all, that angels participate in worship with us. This is fascinating. When we're worshiping the Lord, angels participate in that worship. In the book of Revelation, John's first vision after he sees Jesus is a vision of heaven, the throne of God. He sees the people of God in worship. He sees angels in worship. And in the middle of that drama, suddenly in his vision, the Lamb of God, Jesus, appears, looking as if it had been slain but risen. Jesus is portrayed symbolically in the book of Revelation as the Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb. He's called the Lamb of God 30 times in the book of Revelation. He came as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, John the Baptist said. So Jesus, in this vision of this great worship service, Jesus comes in in the appearance of the vision, the Lamb of God. He enters that worship scene. It says he comes to the center of the throne. Jesus, not on the periphery, but in the center. See, when the Lamb of God came into that vision, into that worship setting, at the throne of God. He was at the center of the throne. That means he was the center of attention. All eyes were upon him, the savior of the world. And when he came in, this is what happened. They sang a new song. They were singing about creation, but when the lamb of God came in, they sang a new song. You, Jesus, the lamb of God, are worthy to take the scroll. The scroll they represents, the seven seal scroll, 
coming future events in God's unfolding plan for the world. That's the scroll in the book. You are worthy to take the scroll from the hand of God and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you redeemed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You, Jesus, have made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Revelation 5, verse 9 and 10. There you see the angels of God and the people of God in heaven worshiping God together. I like to think that even when we gather for worship on the Lord's Day or special services, we come together to sing and to praise God, sometimes at a home meeting, that the angels of God around us are worshiping with us. There are times, this is my experience, we've been in worship together in the beautiful Mount Perrin Sanctuary, thousands of people singing couple hundred voices of a choir inspiring us, the instruments of God playing. We've reached such a crescendo of worship and praise at times. For me, it is though I could even hear heaven sing it. It seemed like there were tens of thousands of more people. I sense in my heart the singing of angels and the people of God, even in an eternal dimension with us. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 5 through 8 tells us that we have Taste of the powers of the ages to come. Think of that. And every now and again in worship, I, I get a taste. We all get a little bit of a taste of what heaven must really be like. The angels worship God alongside us, the people of God. Six of all the Bible says that angels honor the sovereignty of God. In their worship, they praise God that he is sovereign. There's so much fear and worry that we experience in life. But we need to remember that God is sovereign. Sovereign means that he is a king. He has all authority. He's in control is what it means. He governs from heaven. And we need to remember that when we feel like the world's spinning out of control, that our God is sovereign. He is the king of the ages. He's the king eternal. He has all authority. The word worship means to bow down in submission to God. Psalm 96, verse 5 and 6, Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, our maker. We bow down to the sovereignty of God. He has all power, all authority. We submit our will to him. That's worship. When Jesus was arrested in Gethsemane, Peter drew a sword and attacked the servant of the high priest to protect Jesus. He cut off the man's ear, but Jesus touched the man and healed him. Then Jesus told his disciples, put your sword back in its place. For all who live by the sword will die by the sword. Do you not think I cannot call on my father? And he will put at my disposal more than 12 legion of angels, Matthew 26, verse 53. A legion in the Roman army was 6,000 soldiers. So 12 legions equals 72,000 angels. And Jesus said, do you not think I can call upon my father? And he will put at my disposal 72,000 angels. Think of the judgment that could have come. But Jesus gave himself voluntarily for our sins on the cross. Paul put it so powerfully and eloquently. Galatians 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Angels worship God that he is sovereign. He's in control and the sovereign God can dispatch angels. God rules. And Jesus said, put your sword back in place. Quit trying to control everything historically. God was at work in the world through the cross of Christ. And Jesus submitted himself to the will of God. They picked up a sword because they didn't understand the will of God. But true worship is when you and I can pray with Jesus, not my will, but yours be done. Angels teach us that God is with us and that he is at work in our lives and in the course of history. And if you don't learn anything else from the study of angels, this becomes, in my opinion, the bottom line of what we're taught in the Bible, of who these mighty beings are and what they do. And I know there's a mystery about them. We don't see them. The angels of God teach us one great truth, that God is with us and he's at work in our lives, and in the course of history. So be aware today that angels are God's ministry spirits to you and to your family. And treasure this one promise of Scripture. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. 
Psalm 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around you today and will deliver you and protect you from all danger. Pray with me. Lord, we thank you for the understanding of your sovereignty and your power, your protection that we see through the ministry of angels. And we worship you today. We give you honor and glory and praise. And Jesus, we worship you as the Lamb of God who's taken away the sins of the world, taken away our sins that we might have eternal life. Bless your people powerfully through your word today in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining me for this study on angels as we learn about how God works in our lives. For more Bible studies and messages of mine, download the Mount Perrin app today, share it with your friends and family, and also subscribe to my sermon podcast and share it with others as well. Finally, let me thank you for your generous and faithful support of the Mount Perrin Ministries and your giving and your prayers. What we do, we do together. Thank you so much for your partnership in ministry. God bless you. Have a great day.